So this is the 2020 HP Spectre X360 15 inch. And hands down, this is one of the most attractive looking ultrabooks I've ever seen. It's just different. Like it has this classy luxury look to it. These chamfered edges, the gem cut design, the, the two tone finish with the copper lux coming out of it. I just think it looks very, very classy. They've made it different this year. They've reduced the depth of it, making it smaller, putting a 15 inch convertible inside of a 14 inch form factor. You still get good IO. On the left hand side, you have your power button in the corner. You have your power connector, full size HDMI. And then at the end, you have your audio jack. On the other side, you have two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, which can be used to power the laptop. You have a USB port, your webcam kill switch, and a micro SD card slot. The keyboard on this feels great. It has this nice tactile feel to it. It has good travel distance. It's full size, so you get that numeric keypad. You have access to the control center. You can turn off the microphone directly from the, the top lineup. The only complaint I have is when you're typing on this, because they took up a lot of space with the deck, your wrist when typing feels like it's falling off a bit. It's a minor nitpick, but still something I wanna talk about. Touchpad, horizontal, lots of space to move your finger around. It's a very good touchpad. Not as good as the Surface laptop, but good overall. Sticker placement, I don't know, man. This is, this is some sloppy work. I mean, like the Intel sticker is bigger than the Nvidia sticker. The Nvidia sticker is crooked. HP, you gotta have a talk with your sticker guy. The other star of the show is the display. This is a 4K OLED display. It's gorgeous. It's bright. It's color accurate and has fantastic color gamut. The only thing you need to know about it is that there is some PWM flicker under 50%. So if you're sensitive to that, keep that in mind. Bezels have been thinned out. On the 2019 model, the bottom was a bit thicker. Now it's smaller. They reduced the size of the webcam, but it's still the same quality. And you still get Windows Hello facial recognition using the webcam or the fingerprint scanner on the bottom. Speakers are placed on the bottom of the laptop. There's two of them, they get loud, they sound very punchy, but obviously they're not as good as a MacBook Pro, but good for this price point. Internally, not much is upgradable. Like you have this drive slot, which you can swap out for something bigger down the road. I have a one terabyte NVMe SSD with Intel Optane, but the RAM is completely soldered onto the motherboard. If you wanna upgrade this, you can't. So whatever configuration you choose, you're stuck with that RAM. Heat pipes, two fans, it's always good to see. Big battery, 73 watt hours. HP's advertising this with 17 hours, but unfortunately I can only get three hours and 22 minutes. I ran the test twice. I tried the HP recommended profile and I also tried quiet. No matter what I did, I just couldn't beat three hours and 22 minutes. Now my model comes with an Intel i7 10th gen 10750H processor. This is an H series processor, more powerful than the newly announced Tiger Lake U series processor or the processor that's in the 13 inch version of the Spectre X360. This is paired with a GTX 1650 Ti and you're expecting this thing to give you great performance. Unfortunately, the performance is not great at all. Even with the cooling solution, it's just underwhelming, especially when you compare it to the competition. The only area that it did okay was when I compiled Mozilla Firefox, but when it came to Adobe Photoshop, it didn't do well. When it came to Adobe Premiere Pro, it performed very poorly. If you're buying this to use for video editing or any sort of graphically intensive application, this is not the one to get. I'd rather take a look at the HP NV15 instead. Fan noise is pretty good. It doesn't go over 50 decibels when fans are completely maxed out. But the problem is, is that it's being so conservative with its heat management that even when this thing's under full load, you'll find that the clock speeds power throttle so much that it goes under base clock, which is the advertised speed of this laptop. Now it's unfortunate because I really love the look of this thing. It's one of the best looking laptops and there's so many great features about it. But when you pair poor battery life in 2020, like three hours, which is not acceptable, with terrible performance, it makes it very tough to recommend. Now, if you're someone just buying this to, to crank out Excel and Word documents and, and use it as something to sketch notes on, you're fine, it'll, it'll do great. But if you're buying this as a video production tool or any sort of tool where you need to like 
utilize the CPU and GPU, I think you're gonna walk away not happy. Anyways, that wraps up this review. If you liked it, feel free to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.